It is the Riot Podcast. Uh, my headphones just got super loud. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful, you mean? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's 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 not the headphones. It's me. It's my voice. <laughs> well, welcome for the podcast today. Uh, happy Thursday, everybody. What was your highlight of the show? Um, if I, I had to look back and guess, I, I feel like it was your sports talk. Really? I, I really like that too. I do too. Yeah, you appreciate that? Well, I don't know if appreciate's the right word. I just feel like you wanted something we could not give you. Yeah. So and, bad. And so I don't know if like what you guys end up getting is enough for you guys, but I feel like Hudson was just all in on sports. He wanted just a little bit more and we just couldn't quite give him no. that. I just... I didn't play organized sports for so long, and I had a highlight. I was just hoping you guys would have some kind of story that could deliver what you don't uh, have on my, on my expectations. <laughs> yeah, and I make a joke where your mom was your coach. Yeah, and that, that was, was funny. only because uh, Hudson was homeschooled, and so therefore, you know, his yeah. mom was his coach. Your that mom was, would have been your coach in high school. That was a good one. But that was my favorite part of the yeah, show. Actually. That was that, that, <laughs> was, that was my favorite part well, of the we show. We didn't say about you being homeschooled yeah, later. Yeah, so maybe everybody else is a little on the outs with that. Yeah, but. they're like, "What's with the mom joke? Like, was his mom actually his coach, or what's the deal?" <laughs> so uh, we do cover a bit of that. I love inside jokes. Mm-hmm. I'd love oh, to don't be a part we all. Of one, one day. Yeah, it was it was funny going through those because I was like, well, don't you have like a highlight? And Nikki and I were like, well, we played and we had fun. <laughs> That's it. And that was pretty much made it. Friends, you we said. made friends. We made friends. Yeah, that was the highlight. I don't talk to anybody I played uh, sports with. Oh no, whatsoever. of course not. Well, it was just at least good for the time. Yeah, I look at them and uh, sometimes I see them on social media and look down on them <laughs> and think you were better than me then. But, but who's look at me now. now? Yeah, <laughs> look at me now. The places I've gone, the things yeah. you'll never see. Well, we also do a food fight. We finally get to try the vanilla bean bold Canada Dry. That was a highlight. So if you're done with the podcast, uh, when you're finished, head over to Radio U Riot on YouTube and our Facebook page to go ahead and watch that part too. Another thing that I liked uh, during the show is when you guys were talking about the Canadian doctors who are now prescribing essentially sunlight to people, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time in the outdoors. And I was thinking, like, there's nothing worse than when you go to the doctor and you're like, just give me, like, an antibiotic. Please give me some help. And they tell you, just give just go outside. Like I, I'm like, I'm paying you money and you're telling me just to go outside. And so I was thinking about all the times that I've went to the doctor and I've wanted them to give me an antibiotic and then they don't. And if they told me to go outside, I would just be like, I'm never going to come see well, you again. They tell you, you're like, oh, come back in a couple of weeks if it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, just give me something now so I don't yeah, have to come back. Right. But it also feels like this feels suspiciously like a government program with the Parks and Rec in yeah. Canada. To like get people trying, to go to them, yeah. <laughs> they're trying to promote just, you know, the national parks there anyway. So it feels a little wishy-washy, but yeah. that's all right. Yeah, but I can't disagree with a whole lot of that. And as well as like when you guys talked about like people starting their diets tomorrow, mm. like that's like I feel like everybody says like, oh yeah, I'll start tomorrow. That's what I'm gonna start. Just to, I mean, everybody's just trying to make themselves feel better, which is fine. You don't have to start tomorrow, but just don't tell me you're gonna start it if you're not gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> just don't start today. Okay? Yeah. yeah, all right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, enjoy the podcast and make sure you text eight seven seven to Radio U to say hi and join us at Radio U Riot on Facebook. And make sure you join us uh, tomorrow because we're going to be talking to Outsider Heart. They're joining the show. Yeah, so uh, we'll we'll catch you then. Bye. See you guys. <laughs> the worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the Riot podcast. Have you ever wondered, uh, since he retired, what Tom Brady is going to do with his post-retirement So I career? saw yesterday, I assumed it's like investing in more coconut water or something yeah, like right. that. He's got his, uh, you know, some advertising he mm-hmm. likes to do uh, and companies that he helps run and stuff like that. And he still does his podcast, right? I think, you know what? I think he stopped doing that after the season okay. at some point, but I don't know if that's permanent or if it's just he you know some people do seasons of podcasts we think that's weak because we do our podcast every yeah, day every but single day <laughs> outside of that i assumed he would do what lebron did and try to carve out a hollywood career you think and it seems like that's what it's, he's adding to what I, he does i never pictured that uh tom brady would really want to focus on an acting career i didn't necessarily think acting but i thought like oh more sports related yeah. movies and shows yeah, and he sure. would Maybe guest star or like be the coordinator for it or something. Yeah, he yeah I get you. Put his name on be it. Be a producer and stuff like that, but maybe not necessarily star in anything. Well, turns out 
he is getting an acting career started. This is a really interesting choice. It's weird. He is going to be in a new movie called 80 to Brady. 84 Brady. 80, uh, 84 Brady, right. Mm-hmm. And uh, he is going to star alongside Jane Fonda. You know, from the workouts, uh, <laughs> Sally Field. These are all some really older actresses. From Smokey and the Bandit, you okay, might know her, sure. or Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, Rita Moreno, she's in the original West Side Story. Mm-hmm. And Lily Tomlin, who I believe is Miss Frizzle. Miss Frizzle? <laughs> from Magic School Bus. <laughs> So, wow, you're really, I think you're picking or the be- best of their career. Contemporarily, uh, Grace and Frankie. Yeah, the older. That's, that's a Netflix show that some show. people like to watch on Netflix. So uh, it is, it is going to, it is, they are all at least 75 years old. And then there's Tom Brady, who's only 44. Uh, and I guess the movie centers around, it really has to have Tom Brady. I, I don't know. I guess it could have somebody portraying Tom Brady. That'd be a tough acting role to No, fill. I think he's supposed to be it. Yeah, he's going to be portraying himself uh, where these four women, I guess they go on a big road trip to go, and it's based off of a true story of r- women in real life that oh, really go wanted see to go Tom see Brady? Tom Brady at the Super Bowl it's a road uh, back trip in comedy. 2017. Yep. I, I just don't get a good feeling about it. Yeah. But that's all right. I mean, everybody needs to work. It, so. <laughs> it really sounds like uh, like something that wouldn't be for me, even though Tom Brady is in it, mm-hmm. but totally the type of movie that I definitely want to watch. Well, I'll leave it to you. And oh. you don't even need to tell anybody if you're going to watch oh, it. I'm going to I'm going to tell everyone. Are you going to pay to watch it or do you hope it's already just streaming? Uh, you know what? I might go. I might go to the theaters oh, to see this. I'll let you. <laughs> Although I think the crowd with me is going to be a very interesting crowd. You all. Do you? It's like, hey, what? What are they doing? It's eighty-year-olds going on a road trip to see Tom Brady. Uh, it'll be a nice family outing. There's. Uh, I'll go because I. I'm just entertained by the idea. My wife will go for Tom Brady. And I bet you my mother-in-law will go to see all the old actresses. So (laughs) it'll be perfect. It's everybody. It's going to be a family affair. We're going to have a great time. Rita Moreno's in this movie. I can't believe she's still working. She's 90 years old. Uh, Yeah, that's that's all of them. I can't believe they're all still doing that. Yeah. So the Tom Brady movie that he's supposed to be starring in, they haven't given any other details, just the title of it, but not where it'll go and like when that will release. Why pay for so many streaming services that you don't really care about when you can not really care about the riot for free radio you for most of us uh basically everybody uh when you're you're starting out you're you're kind of growing up and you're planning out your life you're thinking uh i want to go after stuff i want to focus on stuff that makes me happy like you, when you're setting up your whether you're going to college or you know however you're organizing your life as you kind of grow up you're thinking i need to Plant. This is something that I think will make me happy. I need to shoot for that. Sure. And uh, you ever think about the flaw with that? That, uh, like, let's say you're thinking, uh, I really want to get, like, I want to be in a, a relationship. And I really want to, you know, find somebody that, that I can date that's going to make me happy and maybe get married and whatnot uh, and have kids. And uh, you think that'll make you happy. But how can you know? Because you've never had it before. So you and then what but if you're one still day, chasing it? Yeah, that, mm. that's what you're planning your whole life around. Or what if you're thinking, uh, well, I want to have a really high level job, uh, high, high position of power, whatever. And uh, so you're shooting for that. But how can you know that will make you happy if you never had it before? Like that. All I'm saying is that leaves you really open to you get to whatever you think you were chasing uh, and you get there and you're like, wait, I'm still not happy. And a lot of times, like especially with a relationship, it can be like, well, this is just isn't the right one or whatever. And I'm not saying that uh, a relationship or what, like a high level position of power, whatever it is you're chasing, it may make you happy. And the flip side of the argument is uh, how do I know it won't make me happy if I never get it? So that I'm open to all of that. But what I want to let you know is. Maybe you shouldn't be chasing what you think will make you happy. Maybe you should start talking to God about what he knows will make you happy. Because Jesus knows your life. Jesus knows who you are better than you do. And so he knows uh, what you should be shooting for, what those goals should be in your life that will actually, if you get to them, will make you fulfilled, will make you happy. Uh, And in fact, just by the sheer fact of having a relationship with God will make you more fulfilled right where you are in this moment. So if you're if you don't want to waste a whole bunch of time chasing something that you think will make you happy that may very well let you down in the end, start talking to God. Say, hey, God, like, where do you where do you want to lead me? Where do you think I belong? Where do you think uh, 
I, I should end up that will actually bring me something that'll make me feel fulfilled, that'll make me feel happy. And once you're starting to work towards that, uh, all of a sudden that's a lot less time wasted and a lot more happiness and fulfillment for you. Start talking to God. He wants to make you happy. He wants to give you a good life. Say, hey, Jesus, I want that. I don't want to waste a bunch of time. I want to know more about what you want for me. Welcome to The Riot, where you listen to us and uh, that's it. It's pretty much a one-way street. The Riot. Radio U. It is a food fight time. The <laughs> moment we've been waiting for. Technically, we have to come up with a different name when it's like beverage fight yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. I think drink fight sounds good. I think so, too. Uh, so it goes back, um, I think, the middle of last year. They had announced the Canada Dry Vanilla Bean Bowl ginger ale. Mm -hmm. Hudson and I are just fans of ginger ale. I'm a big... Are you... I am a fan of ginger ale. Yeah. I like ginger ale, yes. Not just when you're sick or in an airplane. Yeah. Do you drink it any other time? Well, I wouldn't like go out of my way to choose it if I had options, but I will drink it if it's the only option. Okay, we are will you, choose it. Are oh. you more of a of a bolder ginger ale or, or a sweeter ginger ale? Like, um, are you Verner's or Canada oh, Dry? Oh, not Verner's. Not Verner's? Oh, no, because when you try other ginger ale, you realize this doesn't taste very ginger. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's not as ginger ale as you think. Uh, I like the... T- t- Verner's is like cream, ginger cream soda mm-hmm. in a way. This is actually, especially when you get the bold, it's like ginger. Yeah. Yeah, which uh, I like. Canada Dry has a uh, lemonade ginger ale one. Uh-huh. That's Ooh, the that best. sounds good. That's super good. But for this, we have been trying to find it. Thanks to Abby. I think it mostly went to Pennsylvania because so many of our Pennsylvania listeners are like, why can't you find this? Yeah. And we could not where our studios are. And so she sent us some to yeah, try. Yeah, I looked it up. The first time for like sites we follow and stuff, yeah. they said that it was in stores was the middle of November. Oh, was that Oh, late? my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when it was announced, but the middle of November, it was definitely on store shelves. Yeah. And we looked for it, uh, well, since then and never found it. So, so they're in tiny cans as well. It's not even a Which makes it so size. much better. I love the tiny cans. <laughs> I feel like, is it so bold we can't get a full can yeah, of it? Yeah, we wouldn't we be able to handle, handle it. No way. Oh, it smells so good. It oh, does I hope smell good. We've been waiting so long. Like, I don't even know if I can tell you if I don't like it. Like, I just yeah, have to love this. Yeah, who wouldn't this. be able to admit it, right? Is Ready? this the most excited you've been since we did the Little Debbie uh, Christmas tree cake ice cream? This I've been waiting on more than that. Yeah, even more so. And again, I, I love ginger ale. So I think I'm, ex- I'm more excited about it. Mmm, oh. smooth. Oh. That's good. Mm. Mm. I like that. Well, it's got, well, okay, wait, hang on. What's the aftertaste? I can't tell. I shouldn't have had coffee vanilla. this morning. You think it it's is? It's vanilla, yeah. I think it's vanilla, but, man, I'm disappointed. I think I'm it's fighting the coffee. I think, let me taste this again. <sighs> Oh, I knew this would happen. What? I knew I wouldn't like it as much as oh, I hoped I would. No. That's because you hyped it up for too long. Yeah, yeah I know. A little bit lower but expectations. See, it's I'm good. tasting it. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's pretty good. I mean, I'd still drink it, but I was hoping for, like, the best thing. You want a bolder flavor? I, I, I think it says vanilla bean bold. Mm-hmm. I think what it means is it's got a bold vanilla bean, not a bold <laughs> ginger ale. Because oh, if you try sure. the bold ginger ale, it's really, like, it's harsh. Aggressive? It's, yeah, it's really... It's almost, it's spicy. Like, it burns you. Mm. This is not burning me. This is Well, this how is can tickling, you with vanilla bean? This is bean. tickling me with vanilla bean. <laughs> it's good. I, I think don't want to be tickled. I want to be bitten. I think it's really good. Um, I would still pick probably a regular ginger ale over this. Mm. But really? Yeah. I think I might even pick this. I think I like this better than regular ginger ale. Well, you do? Okay, if I you think got so. the lemonade one, we wouldn't okay. be saying any of this. If it was the, that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But I feel like I came in with relatively low expectations for this. So sure. for me, it surpassed me. I mean, I'm very impressed. You know well, what? How do you feel? Because Isaiah's a bit under the weather, and when you're under the weather, ginger ale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just keep it's drinking It's doing it. wonders for me. <laughs> I'm going to finish the rest of this one and another. You're going to have all... No, wait. Okay, who gets the last one then? There's one should be one. me. Oh, you can have it. There's one left. You don't want it? Well, I'm sick. You can get I'm regular just ginger ale. I'm just joking. I'm, like, I'm going to drink the one. Isaiah, Anybody may, else can have that one. I don't care. Isaiah, may I please have the last one? You may. Okay, because no one else at Radio U is getting it then. It's no, gonna, definitely I'm gonna not. I'm going to put it in my bag so it goes over there. And you're wondering, we have four, and you're thinking, why did they sell them in four packs? No. <laughs> 
Uh, Abby, Abby, who sent them in, she says her husband drank the other two. They took the two. They nice. She sent them, which is fine. We're happy to just to get what we got. Well, a six pack but does make more sense. Them. Well, thank you, Abby, for sending those to us. I think it's good. Um, I just, I doubt they'll make that into a permanent flavor yeah. everywhere because we just can't seem to find this near us. Actually, after tasting it a few times, we I brought up Verner's. It tastes very similar to Verner's, except it is a little a little more a little bolder. Yeah, a little less sweet. Verner's is very sweet. So if you like if you like this, maybe Verner's is for you mm. over Canada Dry. But don't bother looking. Yeah, right. <laughs> you won't find it anywhere. No. I don't, you'll find it anywhere. <laughs> well, another successful food. Yay! Fight. Thank you again, Abby, for sending those to yes, us. Thank you very much. The riot with Hudson and Nikki on Radio U. On Radio U. So Isaiah's left the room now. Yeah. Um, are you concerned about his health? <laughs> it is a little concerning. <laughs> so I, yesterday we talked about Isaiah was starting to feel under the weather. Mm-hmm. And he won't do anything about it, meaning like he's not, he didn't want to take his temperature. But you could tell like his cheeks were really flushed. Uh-huh. And he just wasn't feeling good. Yeah. But you then yesterday. You can hear it in his voice a little bit. Yes. But he was like, oh, my throat's fine. My nose is fine. All that stuff. Yeah. Now we forward to today. He is glowing, and not face. not in like a healthy way. Go, and he is beat red. Go to the Radio U Riot Facebook page and uh, look at the video that we just did. And see. Is it red on there? Uh, yeah, you should be able to see it. I, I mean, it's so red. And we even have lighting in here to contradict the red. Yeah. To like make us not look, you know, like uh, as bright sometimes. Uh-huh. He's super bright. He's super sweaty. He doesn't have a fever. No. But I think Isaiah should call it and say he is sick. What does that what does that mean though? If you're ready and you go don't home. What, if, what if he's still able to work? No, those times are not He's anymore. in his own room. We just won't call him in for the rest of the show. Too late. He was already in <laughs> well, here. Well, then we might as well then why should he even leave? Because he's sick. He's but sick. But he's fine. Is he? He's still able to work. Do you think tomorrow will be any better or is he going to get worse? Uh I don't know. I mean, based off of t- going from yesterday to today, <laughs> it doesn't seem to be going in the right direction. And so. tomorrow we have Outsider Hard in. I yeah. can't expose them to uh, his you're glowiness. Right. You're right. They've got important stuff to do. <sighs> I just don't think he's grasping that he might actually be sick. Yeah, but if he, if you, if you told people to Wait, not come he's, in, he's looking. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. If Stay you, in there. If you told people to not come in uh, every time they had a little bit of a sore throat. Or, He's beat red. Or every time that their skin was a little off color by a few shades. <laughs> He's so sweaty then, looking. Then, we, then none of us would ever be here. I know, but in the case where, like, I don't think he has COVID or anything, mm. but there are other Is things. Is red skin a symptom of COVID? Will you please Google that? Because <laughs> you don't have to have a fever. And I know, like, we forget there's other sicknesses, too. Mm-hmm. But I don't want the flu. There's a stomach thing going around. I don't want that. I don't want anything else. Uh-huh. Well, so. it's too late, though. You've talked to him several times face to face. He walked in the last behind couple days. me to throw something away. Yeah. And I was like, don't walk behind me. It's too late. Either we're getting sick or we're not. I don't want to get and anything. If, and if the worst sickness we get is a red face and a little bit of a stuffiness or something, we'll be That's fine. It. The Riot Podcast. Radio View. Nikki, you and I, between the two of us, we've watched a lot of dirty hotel videos. Yeah. That's something we both love. We do. In fact, uh, I recently, me and my wife, subscribed to Discovery Plus, and one of the main reasons is so we can watch a show called Hotel Impossible, (laughs) which is just trying to save all these hotels. They haven't made new episodes in a few years, but uh, definitely... Still applies, still worth watching. Still sounds nicer than a lot of the videos we have watched. It's much better because at least the owners usually care in the Hotel Impossible. (laughs) They're like, we we want your help. The ones that we on YouTube. They don't want help. And it's usually an undercover sort of operation to go in and see how bad these places are. Yeah. So uh, we we know a lot of the stuff you want to watch out for if you go into a hotel room. What might be nasty? You shouldn't touch the bed, don't touch the toilet, and don't touch the shower. You basically don't want to touch anything if you're going into a cheap motel. Hotel. You really should sleep in your car. <laughs> yeah, you're better <laughs> off. Although we recently found out there's a lot of germs in there too. So yeah, but it's your germs. Yeah, that's true. If it's your car, at least you know where they came from. Uh, but I've never seen in all the hotel videos I've watched, all the shows and stuff, I've never seen them focus on this item that is now uh, being reported as one of the germiest items in a hotel room. This is the toilet. It's not the toilet. 
Was it, the rest of the room? It, it's, uh, again, it's everything, especially depending on the hotel. Oh, the but TV remote, maybe. The TV remote is a bad one. Mm. That's 100%. But this one you probably would think of even less. The hair dryer. Oh, the hair dryer? The I hair guess the, dry- I thought the heat would kill any germs anyways. Well, maybe inside. But not on but the But then outside. again, they also say uh, when you're going into a public bathroom and they have the hand dryers that mm-hmm. blow, that those are really bad because they blow all the germs all over the place sure. just by moving the air around. So they're making it airborne. Uh, in this case, they say, uh, now this was a, an ABC report uh, where they had microbiologist Charles Gerba test nine hotel rooms across Los Angeles. Uh, and they were all different ratings, up to five stars. He said one of the germiest things he found was the hair dryer. And the theory is because when the room service is going through and uh, or uh, what do you call it? The cleaning, the cleaning, cleaning service is going through. Uh, they probably don't focus on the hair dryer because who uses the hotel hair dryer? But apparently some people do. And when those people do. They get germs all over it. It doesn't get wiped and off. And it doesn't get wiped off. And then maybe there's airborne germs that land on it and stuff like that because it's, you know, in the bathroom. So a lot of times it's in that little hair dryer bag. Yeah. You don't even <laughs> notice it's there. You don't even notice it's there. But yeah, I guess, I mean, it makes sense. I just, I don't know how many times in a hotel we use the yeah, hair dryer. right. I know I don't. I'm sure I'm getting enough germs from everything else. Yeah, but that's now right. I'll know not to touch it. They do say some of the other things to focus on. Definitely the remote. You never want to touch I wipe down the hotel remote, even though, it, like, if you're going to a fine hotel, they should be cleaning it. Oh, but, but they're not. But you can't be sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other thing that is really bad is chairs in hotel rooms, because un- even if it's a good hotel that has a really good, like does a really good job of cleaning, chairs are harder to clean because unlike the bed sheets and stuff, you can throw that in in the wash. Chairs are a fabric of of some kind or another. They you can't just really w- the yeah. Germs. They soak everything Ooh. in, and you don't even want to know what people do in those chairs. Evan, help don't you even think about that. If you're sitting on the chair doing your hair, yeah, <laughs> with the hair dryer, you you're d- just going to be a mess. Definitely don't sit on anything on the chair naked, because uh, so, then the germs will just get right up on oh, you. It's all worse. And you're probably not the first person to sit in the chair oh, naked. naked. So. <laughs> Okay, you know what? Right. Let's never go on a hotel again. Everything you love about the riot plus a handy dandy fast forward option. This is the worst of the riot podcast. I have here a list of the richest cats and dogs in the world. Man, it'd be nice. Yeah, this is. Well, I think <laughs> this is just going to make you feel bad. Well, would it be nice to be the pet or would it be nice to be the owner of the pet? Because some of it is like social media pet stars. Yeah. Others, the owners have so much money that by way of that, the pets do. Right. Uh, and you just wonder for the pets, what would they even spend the money on? Well, they're they're groomed. Yeah, Let's say this. That's, <laughs> they look nicer than wonder, our pets. You think about that. If it was up to the pet, do they even want that? Um, you think they like being groomed? Yeah, I mean, they just have whatever. And and it's probably the case of they have everything we have or like our pets have. Yeah. Just nicer versions of it. Yeah, them. that's true. But, uh, you know, it, I don't know. It'd take a lot of, uh, it'd take a much nicer version of the stuff my pet has to spend, say, about $24 million. That's so which much. Which is uh, the fifth richest pet on the list, Jif Palm. I guess that's a little, it's what is a, that, a Pomeranian? Yeah, it's a little, it was, uh, he's still alive, isn't he? I believe that he or she uh, is and uh, currently has 9.8 million followers on Instagram. That's the most of any dog on this list. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've seen merchandise for lot, him. That's a lot, a lot of advertising dollars going to Jif Palm. Uh, th- number four on the list is actually, I don't think this counts because this is, Five dogs, a Sadie, Sonny, Lauren, Layla, and Luke. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are collectively worth about $28, $29 million. Uh, they are Oprah's dogs. And they're groomed. They yeah, look nice. They are taken care of. And they, so uh, Someone's brushing them. They, <laughs> here's something sad. These five dogs have a trust fund. Oh, no, they do? <laughs> yeah, they do. Well, that way they're always taken care of. Yeah, they will. If they I outlive bet. Oprah, they so- will. <laughs> I'm just saying this because maybe this is with my dogs. Someone's brushing their hair and brushing their teeth. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, number three on the list <laughs> worth, uh, it's hard to do the math because this is all in UK dollars, but 71 million pounds. So that would be. Uh, if you converted it, <laughs> uh, let's see, 95 million. 95 million dollars. This is Olivia Benson 
It's a cat. Yeah, that's Taylor Swift's cat. You knew that? Yeah. Why? Well, okay. Listen, Why would you just, know that? I have a cat, and uh-huh. I just didn't want of those things. So it's, uh, what? Your cat follows uh, no, Olivia Benson on TikTok. I think or that's a Instagram? law. It's like a Law and Order uh, no, name. I, I know. Are you just reading this, or do you know all of this? No, I knew that. Why would you know that? <laughs> Listen, you know stupid stuff. Do you too. watch Law and Order? No. <laughs> It's just but something I can you learn. explain why I know things. <laughs> don't yell at me. Okay, you just learn things. You don't want to know it, but you just learn it. <laughs> I just don't know why you would retain that. Five minutes from now, I'm going to forget what Taylor Swift's cat's name is and what its name. And if I did know the name, I wouldn't know it was the Law and Order. Okay, name. you're uh, yelling and it's upsetting. <laughs> I just don't know why you know. You're upsetting the cats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two on the list. Uh, is Nala worth uh, a, a little over $95 million? And uh, Nala is also a cat. Uh, what is Nala famous for or uh, rich for? I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> say you're going to yell. It says like all of these, everybody on the list, they all seem to own Guinness World Records. Yeah. What world records? Yeah, and do don't you know. know. That? You no, don't I know don't. That? don't Are you, know do you anything. know and you're not admitting it? I'm not going to say anything <laughs> at all. But you should tell the number one because, man, that dog has yeah, money. This dog is what. So we're talking $95 million for number two on the list. Uh, number one on the list is worth close to $500 million. million dollars. It's Gunther the Sixth. It's a German Shepherd. Yeah. Uh, Gunther. Uh, inherited uh, all of that money because of. Uh, it, he, I guess he is involved in the Gunther Corporation. Dude, I don't even know. Do you I know don't, what the Gunther Corporation I is? I actually do not know what it Me is. Either, but he's so. like the dog from that. Yeah, so there's even rumors that he sold a mansion owned by Madonna. And like he was trying to buy, like, you can't get a house, yeah, but this dog This dog can could get have his own, uh, and not a dog house, just mm-hmm. a house house and a nice one. Well, these are all really well taken care of pets. Yeah, it makes me... Again, it makes me feel bad, and I just don't know why I can't capitalize on my dog. Well, get her to get involved. She I has posted to do her stuff. on TikTok a few times and whatever. Uh, it does better numbers than I do, but <laughs> that doesn't mean it says <laughs> these numbers. Well, you're on your way to a few dollars then. Yeah, I'm going to have to amp up the posting game and uh, maybe get her gr- nice and groomed. Maybe yeah. that's the difference. You have to spend some money to make some that's money. That's right. Yeah! <laughs> you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live. Yet here you are. I also like to live dangerously. This is the worst of the Riot Podcast. The football broadcasting wars are fully underway. Broadcasting wars? Yeah. uh, Oh, like for broadcasters. Yeah, all Ah. of the the NFL, the channels that are able to, or the networks that are able to broadcast the NFL are all fighting over the different personalities that they want to have. Uh, broadcast their games uh, as an, uh, analysts and commentators, uh, play-by-play guys. And so uh, the latest shoe to drop is Troy Aikman, mm-hmm. who has been the longtime uh, analyst, the lead analyst for Fox Sports. Uh, he is going to be leaving Fox to go to ESPN Ooh, for Monday Night Football. Is that big drama, guys? That is big pretty drama. big. He's is been it? with Fox for a long time. Man, ESPN came in with the money. They yeah. did. <laughs> I think it's interesting because he's not going to do nearly as many games no. on ESPN. Like, on Fox, he was on there every Sunday. Yep. ESPN, he's going to be on there, what, once a week? Is Monday once Night Football? Is that on, that's on NBC, isn't okay, it? Okay, now wait. That does sound better then. You're getting that's more what I'm money, thinking. Yeah. less work. More money, less work. It sounds great. He was, With Fox, he was doing, uh, yeah, every Sunday. And then a lot of times they did have Thursday Night Football. So he was always on Thursday Night Football as well. But, yeah, now it should be primarily just one game one night a week, and then there's speculation now that ESPN is also going to try to bring over Joe Buck, Uh who has been the play-by-play with Troy Aikman for the longest time as well. He also does, like, he doesn't just do football, he does a lot of baseball as well, so it'll be interesting to see if ESPN can get him away, but uh, what's a little sad in a way is that ESPN, like, they've had guys that have been doing Monday night, and not for very long, Steve Levy, Lewis Riddick and Brian Greasy. And oh, now is it's Steve really... Levy leaving? <laughs> is that what it it's, is? I guess it's in yep. the name. They're <laughs> telling him he has to leave. Him. Yeah, so for Troy Aikman, you guys tell me if this feels like a lot. Uh, they expect that his deal would be for five years, mm-hmm. and his yearly salary would be expected to approach or exceed Tony Romo's, at, which his is at $17.5 million. 
per year yeah, that feels for like... per contract. What? That's yeah. so much. It's so, way too so much. much. $17.5 million for each year for five years. That's what? unreal. That's more than a lot of the quarterbacks oh, in the league make. Yeah. yeah. By far. By no far. wonder uh, some of them are so quick to want to retire. It's, uh, you know, all of a sudden they're That's like, true. well, if I can make that kind of money. Uh, you totally understand it, but I what I don't understand is why they do pay so much. Because, uh, granted, ESPN's guys like they're not really they haven't been big names. Although Steve Levy has been doing broadcasting for a long time, he's he's a good broadcaster. They're not huge names. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. They add a ton to the broadcast, but at the same time, I don't think people are not are choosing to watch or not watch games based off of who the commentators are. Yeah. Especially if you look at like. Uh, during Sunday Night Football when Chris Collinsworth is on, how many people are complaining about him, <laughs> yet they're still watching, and people complain about Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, too. So they still keep on watching. That um, for Fox, if there's an opening for two people, are you two leaving? Is that it? Oh, <laughs> if they're paying that, that much. Yeah, for sure. I would go I would go every Sunday. I would work way more. I would yeah. work every Sunday and Monday and Thursday if they pay me that much. But uh, Hudson, do you have like a, a certain broadcaster that you hate listening to? Everybody has like one they don't like. I don't like Tony. Romo. Neither you do don't. I. Oh. I don't like Tony. Yeah. I, I don't. I liked him at first, but now I just. I is he just stand. not very good at it? I think See? he's good at it, but I think whatever. My problem with Tony is he just always like seems like he's on like one team, like one quarterback who he like loves, and so like talk about how great they are the whole game and how every throw he makes is like so spec- so spectacular. And after a while, that just it just gets old to me. I think Tony Romo, in my opinion, the reason I don't like him is because he is too much of. He has too much of a like a fan persona to mm-hmm. him where he's just uh even though his analysis can be good, he's just so excited by everything in a yeah. way that, that doesn't come across as professional. professional to me. Sure. And uh so yeah, I just kind of find him kind of obnoxious compared to some of the other guys that feel more more businessy. That's a, that's a harsh word there. Obnoxious. What? Obnoxious. <laughs> is, he, is he the one who suddenly had more hairs at the other no, guy? That's true. That's Drew Brees. Okay, which uh, people also seem to hate when he has wound up broadcast. You know, you uh, do an NFL game, there's a bunch of people that are going to hate you no They're matter gonna how They're going to hate you, but it doesn't matter. You're going to have almost $18 million yeah, that year, so they right. can hate you all You can they all they hate me mm-hmm. if I have that much money. Yeah, yeah. That somehow, that covers up for a lot of hate. <laughs> it does. <laughs> If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. The Riot, Radio U. Uh, I went skating, ice skating yesterday for the first time in several years. Uh, and I was thinking, it had me thinking of, because uh, of course when I used to skate, I used to play ice hockey yeah. as a child. And uh, I know Before we all. Before you left Canada or <laughs> after? Uh, definitely after. I left Canada at nine months old. So. Uh, well, I don't know because yeah. in Canada you could be skating. But by already then. I was skating at that young age. No, uh, <laughs> I was. So it had me thinking uh, we all played sports growing up, right? A sport, sure. Yeah, and uh, we never really have talked about them. Mm-hmm. So uh, is that because, uh, like, did we all suck or what happened? Well, you leave it behind yeah. in your uh, middle school and high school years. I've heard a little. So, Nikki, you played volleyball until how long? Uh, I played how three old? years. And what, what age were you when you stopped? Uh, freshman. That was my last year. Is it because you weren't good enough? or No, I was actually really good. You just didn't good, like it? You didn't like it? Dude, that hurt the knees even back then. Yeah. Like, it was bad. <laughs> it was so bad. But I think I was pretty good. You're pretty good? And I, not just because I'm, I'm I think, a tiny bit taller for most average girl heights. Yeah. But they were like, yeah, just put her right there. <laughs> yeah. Put her in the front. <laughs> yeah, just leave her there. Who it's knows fine. how things could be different, though? Yeah. If you, uh, you could have become a professional volleyball player. <laughs> I don't think I think yeah. there's a reason I'm here in radio. <laughs> uh, I said, what, you played lacrosse, right? Did you I play, did. Did you play anything else? I played organized? football and basketball. I played basketball until my junior year. I played football all, all throughout and lacrosse all throughout as well. Were you any good? I was pretty okay. I played college lacrosse. Pretty okay. Right? College lacrosse. <laughs> I played college lacrosse for just my freshman year, and then I was done. Yeah. Is it? Were you good enough to like? Would you put that in a dating profile? Be like three sport athlete or anything like no, that? No, <laughs> no, no. It's in your picture profile thing. Yeah, you're right. Like, oh. you, you're not using your uh, college uh, scouts. dot com or whatever. It is no, that, is, that would not be my dating profile. I definitely have left that. <laughs> I think there's a point in your like your uh, sports career yeah. where you realize like, hey, I'm doing this for fun because it's not going to be like my profession. Yeah, yeah. And so you just enjoy it during school, and then that's it. You don't do anything else. That's 
doesn't mean that you still can't uh, be proud of it. You can't be the guy, though, that's like, oh, yeah, well, back still in the limited. day, <laughs> this is what I was doing. Like, you reach a point where you no longer can, like, bring it up in casual conversations what as point much is that? without being, like, bragging about it. That's, like, a, two years after you get done doing it. So like, if I came to work every day with, like, my, my letter jacket and stuff, yes, like, exactly. well, you <laughs> that know, would be you, weird. you don't play anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that most people, though, especially when it comes to high school football, if you played, you still talk about it. Well, of course. I thought. And with, like, your buddies. not Isaiah. I, no, I do with, like, my friends that yeah. also I played with, but I wouldn't meet you on the streets and be like, I don't know if you know or not, but uh, back in the day, I was quite the corner. <laughs> like, no one's going to say that now. I three sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's, well, nobody cares about impressive. it anymore. Hudson, you're pushing that on us, though. Like, we're not, I mean, what do you think? We should go back and start playing again? No, I just, I want to hear stories about it. There is no stories. You don't have any stories. You Nothing I, interesting okay, happened while you played volleyball, volleyball for three years. Yeah. Volleyball was, you had a long day at school, they sat you on a bus, you got to sit in a cafeteria for hours, <laughs> pretend to do schoolwork, play a game, get no food, sit against the wall when you were in trouble, and you had to sit on the wall, and that was uh, it. That was your Why does volleyball. anybody do that then? Because you wanted to have something to do, I guess. Did it, did it teach you lessons? You think you're a better person? Lots of, of life lessons. Yeah. Of no, I mean, I had a pretty good attitude. So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it helped or hurt you anything. You think you'd be better off if you didn't play volleyball? That's good or to play Or would you have one. enjoyed your school life more if you didn't have nah, to take No, I mean, so it was time. just fun anyways. And what about you? What about me? What, did you learn any lessons? Oh, or yeah. A lot, I mean, do you I have mean, any so stories? I wouldn't say any, like, big stories or anything, but I would just say, I mean, it, it, it made, gave me something to do through high school. and It helped me through high school, and then in college, I played my freshman year, and I was like, well, you know, I want to just be able to do school and be able to relax a little bit. After a while, you just get so burnt out from it. And after yeah. my Another freshman thing year, to do. I was like, oh, I'm good. Well, Hudson, stop asking, because we're got... not doing a Radio U League, all you right? Didn't, oh, you didn't even ask me about my stories, though. Well, do you, you have do? stories? Well, uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I was pretty accomplished. Do you want do you want a minute? You Let's wanna, hear. You want us to come back and just Let's, why don't you come back? I'll tell you about your, my career. My career. career and why it ended early. And was it your mom your coach? <laughs> oh no. goodness, now it's coming out. <laughs> well, <What's> wasn't she? <laughs> no, she wasn't. <laughs> we'll do it next. If you're looking for hot takes on the day's most important news stories, uh, you're in the wrong place. You're listening to the riot on Radio U. We're all going through uh, reliving our youth sports highlights. I think this is because Hudson went ice skating yesterday. Yeah. And so suddenly now you're back into hockey. Yeah. And well, you're expecting us to have these same warm memories, too. I, mean, I just, uh, I, you play a sport for long enough, you have to have some kind of accomplishment that you're proud of, right? No, you just did it. Yeah? You just, just did. participated. You just did. Yeah. You, what is your best, what do you think is your highlight? Like the top that moment you of your it. career that you just, that you were able to do do it and yes. <laughs> didn't get injured. That no injuries. I, I, I made it all the way through without being hurt. Uh, had a lot of fun along the way. Made lots of friends. All the good stuff. Oh, that's know. that's the highlight. Those the are all the highlights. <laughs> well, you know? Ashley just texted in. Broke my nose playing volleyball. Is that good enough story for you, Hudson? <laughs> that's a great <laughs> story. At least it's something. At least it's a story. <laughs> hopefully it wasn't a ball. I hope it wasn't a ball to the sure. face. But I'm like, I'm assuming it was a ball to the face. Ashley, I agree. It feels like Hudson is wanting more drama than there wasn't drama during our uh, sporting. Careers. Yeah, I, want, I wanted something. You wanted well, what the did juice. you do? I uh, so I was a two sport athlete. I didn't get I didn't get to high school. I had to retire at the age of like fourteen. <laughs> Before uh, early yeah. retirement. <laughs> early retirement. I played ho- ice hockey and yeah. I played uh, baseball. I played baseball longer than hockey. I played little league baseball. And uh, although it was in Maryland, so it wasn't Little League, we did Ripken League. Oh. Yeah. So totally different. We could have never gone to Williamsport if we tried. Really? Yeah. That's funny. We would have gone to Aberdeen instead. But uh, I was on, uh, well, the highlight of my career is I made All-Stars. Like regional all stars. Sure. Yeah. I was like 12 years old. There you go. Get, get no a load of this. He's wanting more yes. accomplishments no. from us. But get a load of this. We have none of that. When I made all stars uh, that season, I got zero hits. Hey! I went an Wait, entire what? season. <laughs> Wait, I what? An, I went an entire season, no hits. As a batter, not as a pitcher. <laughs> I got no hits. On the all-star team or just no, on the, on the, the season? on the regular season. Then how'd you become an the all-star? All-stars followed up the regular season, and uh, I beat out only two other people. Did uh, they have any hits? Uh, I think that, you know what, I don't know. I wasn't keeping track of their stats. Yeah. But uh, I beat out two other kids uh, to make the all-stars, 
And uh, I to this day, I don't know why the coach chose me. See, here's what's weird. You you think so? The coach was the same coach I had for my regular season team. Yeah. And uh, so maybe it's like because he was familiar with me versus these other two kids, or maybe also sucked. But uh, he was also the coach for them, Aww. so we were all on the same team. <laughs> maybe you were like the least annoying or something. I think he that's was probably like, well, what all it was. These kids which are, is surprising, isn't that? Isn't that surprising? Yeah, all these kids are <laughs> awful, but this one at least he isn't terribly annoying. I so love it. Take him. That feels so you. You're like, yes, I made the all star. I had no hits no that hits. season. Zero uh, hits though. Zero <laughs> hits. And our team was so bad that the. Players just like kept quitting, yeah. and so the all as in the all star team. So we didn't even finish the all star season. Oh uh, no! Although I was there for every until we actually just started forfeiting games. I was yeah. there. He was there for every game. He was so excited to be on the all star team. I, I had was. no idea why, but I he knew, was so happy. I knew when I grew up that I'd be looking back on this, and this is my major sports accomplishment. That's so all you got. I did that, and I won a championship. Uh, and a couple of years later, and got a game ball, even though I also didn't. I don't. I, I zero hits. I zero hits. Sucked. Yeah. They, 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 <laughs> zero gave, hits. they felt bad for me, so they gave me a game ball. Well, it was never on base. Hudson's yeah. career, like you said, ended by 14 yeah. 15. Uh, like, it, it, that's how uh, you know young he was. One all star retired. <laughs> zero <Aww>. hits. <laughs> well, good. Put for me you. in the. Put, put me you in back the, in the game. Put me in the uh, little. The Cal Ripken League Hall of Fame. <laughs> If they keep talking long enough, they're bound to say something that you agree with. The Riot with Hudson and Nikki on Radio U. Well, uh, if you go to see a doctor in Canada mm-hmm. and you've got an ailment, one of the things the doctor may prescribe to you now is to go outside. To go outside? Yeah. Well, that sounds nice, except if you're really sick in the moment. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, is that like outside to get my antibiotics? <laughs> Like, where are they? Yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> this probably wouldn't be if you're, you know, if you need bed rest or something. Immediate sick. <laughs> this is uh, more if you just, you're just not feeling great. I'm just, I'm just feeling off, doc. The Canadian doctors may prescribe to you that you should go to a national park. That'd be also good if you're feeling more uh, physical and like mental health as well. Yeah. So they're prescribing passes to national parks and that is through a new a program which you know tells you there's benefits with spending time outside in nature. Yeah, so what I guess maybe they charge to get into national parks in Canada, I would think. Well, they do here, right? Yeah, so. I think they do. Some of them uh, yeah. at least. And so now you uh you will get uh I guess free passes to go into a national park if the doctor deems it necessary. So is that like here everybody gets a prescription for like weed and stuff? Yeah, that's what I was th- exactly what I was thinking. You go to the do- doctor, you make up something. Yeah. It's like I got you know, I'm just uh I'm uh, what was it? what's the one? I'm afraid to go on planes. Yeah. I get nervous on planes. You need to bring your dog. All right, here's your uh, medical marijuana for for Canada. They're like I I just feel uh I, I don't even know. I don't even, what would you make up? Well, you would just say you are not feeling the best. I'm just feeling anxious, Doc. Exactly. That's yeah. a good one. And just feeling kind of nervous. They would give you that. But honestly, I can totally tell like that would be a good thing to help you if yeah. you were. Uh, so you don't need to lie about it. And I wonder <laughs> if, it, uh, if you get the prescription for a national park. Is that um, just a blanket where you can go to, it's just a free pass, you can go to whichever national park you want? They say Or do you have that. to be like... Doc, I'm planning on being in Ontario next month, and I'm just feeling really anxious about it. Being there. Uh, they <laughs> and say he's like, that oh, here's the Ontario National Park. It's the Parks Discovery Pass, which normally is about $57 U.S., 72 uh-huh. Canadian, per adult per year. And if the, actually, the doctor has to be registered with the program, too. Uh, so it's not like any doctor can do it. Yeah. And then they can offer the Parks Can- uh, Canada Discovery Pass. Well, we're we're acting like your insurance is going to pay for this. You know they're not. They're going to yeah. be like, this is not covered. You have to pay for the fifty-seven dollar park pass yourself. And you're like, I didn't need a doctor to tell me, to, to prescribe this for me. Then I can just go buy it. Well, great idea. If not, if you can't do this, you're not in Canada. You don't want to go to like a national park. Just uh-huh. find a nice park near you and. They say that they recommend going outdoors for at least 20 minutes, at least um, a few times each week. That'll de- it'll definitely, it can't hurt, right? I mm. mean, I guess it could hurt if you're doing a lot of hiking. It's a steep incline or something. But other than that, though, it can't hurt. <laughs> you're like, uh, or if you get poison ivy or, you know, there's thorns and nettles out there. Well, I am looking f- to help me uh-huh. for a nice flat national park. Flat uh, with without a, thorns. A and paved pathway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Worst of the Riot. 
podcast. We're currently watching out for the Coca-Cola Star One. Starlight. Starlight. People Starlight, are- Star Bright. <laughs> First, First Coca Cola I see tonight. <laughs> uh, people are maybe not as impressed on early reviews on uh-huh. what it is, but now Pepsi's like, "Hey, Pepsi I got something new too." Is going in a much more different and I would say more interesting than the Coke. No, I agree. Uh, direction. They are introducing Nitro Pepsi, which they say is the first ever nitrogen infused cola. Uh, you may remember if you're a coffee fan. Uh, that nitro coffee has become quite popular. Sure. Uh, it, it experienced a heyday. I think it's still around in a lot of places, but it definitely had uh, a moment where it makes the coffee a lot smoother, a lot creamier, uh, and kind of mellows out some of the bitterness. And then uh, I've also seen nitro beer became popular as well. In fact, mm-hmm. that might have predated uh, the nitro coffee. So now Pepsi introducing the first ever nitrogen-infused cola. Uh, there, It's going to be available as regular uh, like regular Pepsi style and then vanilla Pepsi style as well. Well, they want you to call it the new name. What's They're that? calling it Draft Cola. Draft Cola. And Pepsi Vanilla Draft Cola. Yeah. And it'll be in newly designed cans in single serve and four packs. So today it starts pre or actually it was yesterday. Yeah. Pre-ordering on Walmart uh, for the two flavors and then it'll go nationwide starting March 28th. Supposedly. Supposedly, We yeah. always have to say. So Dude, they- Pepsi's tough though, man. I'm just not a fan of Pepsi. Pepsi. But maybe this would be totally different. I don't think adding nitrogen infused cola stuff will do that. I mean, it's going to be trick. definitely a very different experience because it's going to be, again, a lot smoother. And not that Pepsi is bitter, but uh, it'll mellow out, maybe mellow things out a little bit. So for they you. say if you're going to drink a nitro Pepsi, this is how you have to drink it. It is best served cold without ice. Okay. They say hard poured or fully inverted into a tall glass. Okay. And they say sipped directly from the glass. You're not supposed to have a straw with something nitro infused. Yeah. So that you get the frothy foam on the top of it. Yeah. So it really feels like uh, uh, like too much work. If, well, yeah. I just <laughs> or think like a beer. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, that's actually what I was going with. Where uh, with beer and with coffee, there's uh, there's been a movement for several years now of the you know the craft version of it where mm-hmm. you just have to you take it more seriously there's the you know the dopes out there the uneducated that'll just drink miller light and folgers but then there's you the classy individual who knows how to properly sip a beer properly sip a coffee and taste the notes and that's what pepsi is trying to do when it comes to soda well i feel like if i do find nitro pepsi i need to look up again their order of like how you're yeah, supposed right, to drink what you're it. supposed to do you need some sort of cheat sheet with it i also want to know how much are we talking because uh what's the other thing about uh you know craft beer craft coffee more expensive yeah so how oh my gosh what Tw- get, no Guess how much you uh, you would have to pay for a 12-pack of the it's Nitro Pepsi. It's not $24, is it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's That's so expensive. so much. Never mind. Yep. All right. <laughs> uh, we're not food fighting this. Man, it's not in the, the radio you budget. Is the can made of gold? Yeah. There's no <laughs> nitrogen. It's just another element, right? You can just, like, why is it so expensive? Listen, I don't know. That's maybe, more than beer. Maybe we're, we're too cheap today. I don't know. No, that's too much, we'll man. See. That is too much. So that's the pre-order price for 12 cans you get uh 24 dollars and uh i can see here that it has 125 percent of your daily value of added sugar at that price it should yeah that's right (laughs) if you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired you don't know how lucky you are you're listening to the worst of the riot podcast we have a new survey here. 2,000 adults all about dieting. Hey, and, what's it uh, say? Well, it says that 57% of people say that they're going to start a new diet, uh, but never do. They're going to start a new diet tomorrow oh, and never it? actually do. <laughs> well, I feel like also a lot of people, you'll say, oh, you're going to start it tomorrow and you start it in the morning and then something happens already to yeah, derail you. Right. And you're like, well, I'll start again another day. Yeah. And you just keep pushing it off. I mean, technically, no matter what you're eating, you're on a diet. Might not be a pretty one. No. But- <laughs> what what you eat is your diet, right? <laughs> That's so, true. So I guess in a way, if we all, we all could say at any time, yes, I'm on a diet. But uh, 57% of people say they're delaying the start of a new diet. And uh, one of the main reasons is because there's so many 
uh, diet options. Mm-hmm. The average person has tried nine different diets. I didn't. E- I mean, I guess there is a lot of options. I didn't realize it was that high. But uh, I mean, what is there? There's keto. There's low calorie. What is the Atkins well, South that, Beach? That uh, would count like vegan. You paleo, know, like if you were yeah, based. right. So there's. There's a lot of options out there, and it sounds like a lot of people just aren't finding the one that's right for them. Yeah, that's Because it. they're all too hard. <laughs> they're all too hard to stay with. And don't feel bad if you're like, man, it's not working again because everybody else feels overwhelmed. Yeah. And with this study, that shows that, yeah, there's a lot of options, and you start one or you plan to start one the next day, and then something comes up and you don't. Now, they do say that 73% of people currently believe they're on the right diet for them. Which I think in a lot of cases means wait, what's the just joke? the standard the seafood diet? That's it, that's yeah, the, one. the seafood and you eat it. <laughs> that's it. Man, that's an old joke. It, <laughs> listen, all right, it was the only one I remember. No, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> that's always comes to my mind as well. It's such a whoever came up with that, they should be making money off of that joke. That's a classic that was diet a classic. joke. Yeah, but uh, I, I I definitely get this. It's hard, uh, especially. Once you start a diet and go with it for a little bit, it's hard to admit that you've given up on it. Mm. That's uh, that's where I find myself a lot of times, where I'll go a couple weeks on a diet, and one of the days during those couple weeks, I'll cheat, and then I want to cheat again, and then it's like, all right, the next day. And then like that's really where where my experience comes in. Of you, you, It's not that you're about to start a diet. It's I'm going to get back on the diet. On the diet. And then you never do. So they say weight concerns, health concerns, uh, improving their mood follows behind on like reasons for it. Yeah. Uh, Top five reasons, including a lifestyle change and wanting more energy. Well, uh, are we going to I'm in that I'm at the point right now. Where You're I, still on yours. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Or I'm, I'm on it, but days. I'm trying to uh, I'm still trying to limit and I, it's re- I'm on the, I could easily be on the downward slope of not being on the diet anymore. I, I see. That's enough of that. For more Riot content, head to riot.radiou.com.